experiences so far. So let's start at the beginning. From doing your education in the University of Madras to becoming the VP of the University Music Group to becoming the founder and CEO of Asian Consulting Services. What has been your experiences so far? The, well, the, the you know the experience has been you know phenomenal. It's a lot of learning experience. Mm -hmm. uh, Right, I think uh, it's it's a really you know most often if you have to personalize it's really a, the experience of knowing you better mm -hmm. in context of the world, right? So because you, uh, for every person the always the reference point is them, mm -hmm. but they are but, but they themselves it does, it's always about measuring you where you stand mm -hmm. with the ecosystem you are in always. Right. So it's that experience, uh, you know, it's been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for uh, for people young, always uh, coming out of school and coming out of college, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the drive and the ambition you have to do accomplish something and all that stuff. And then you know that you have to do something and accomplish something. Mm -hmm. But what it is and what what is your personality and what is your skill, what is your passion, mm -hmm. uh, or the passion is kind of a misused word. What you are natural at, mm -hmm. right? That is what really a passion should be for any person, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, because it becomes uh, many times uh, what is a passion becomes a very philosophical, mm -hmm. very ambiguous kind of conversation for many people. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it should be simply what you are natural at, what comes very easily for you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and taking that and then making into a uh, yeah, you know, in the world, in some way, you can take that and deliver value to your ecosystem, mm -hmm. right? That is what it is, and uh, everything uh, in the career, uh, whoever has done what, whatever, uh, excelled in their career, professional career, or whatever in business, entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. innovation, or academic, mm -hmm. or whatever it is, it is really that taking their base, that attribute, and then figuring it out how that attribute. Uh, you know uh, the core attribute or characteristic of theirs mm -hmm. fits into the uh, into the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. The ecosystem can be academia. The ecosystem can be business. The ecosystem could be whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, figuring it out and navigating and figuring out a way to navigate through that system. Mm -hmm. uh, while you are doing that, you figure out yourself. Uh, that's what it is. Uh, it's been great from that point of view. Um, you know, I've learned a lot. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot about myself. It's and that's another important thing. You learn while navigating. You, you, you one way is uh, you you can learn by introspecting. Another way is by navigating. You learn a lot about the system and yourself. Right. Yeah. So that's what it's been. It's been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, UMG. Uh, you know, I worked there, and then I, always I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, the entrepreneur really means is that uh, you know you going and trying to do something yourself, right? Yeah, that being that adventure in you and stuff like that. Um, seize an opportunity, mm -hmm. um, and there is always comes a risks mm -hmm. whenever trying to do anything adventurous because adventure is you, you are not doing anything adventurous if you are not taking any risk. Mm -hmm. Play put it plain and simple. Right. So there is always comes with a risk. Mm -hmm. Is that a risk, a calculated risk you are willing to take? Uh, right and uh, and is it a risk you can take uh, and if you are uh, if you fail at it it's not going to crash and burn you uh, right something like that you need to calculate and that's a calculated risk everybody has to do uh, in whatever they are doing and uh, you know some works some doesn't work and you learn from that in my case uh, you know um, and we do that in switching jobs we do that in uh, making a business that's what I did and it worked out most likely uh, if you thoughtfully anybody does it, mm -hmm. most likely it will work out, yeah. right? Most likely it works out right. uh, for positive. The degree will be varying for different people, mm -hmm. but most likely if it's done thoughtfully, the keyword is thoughtfully, mm -hmm. uh, it will work out. Right. Wow, it's been an incredible journey of self-discovery and yeah. uh, 
you know, a journey within, right? And finding your values, where you come from, what it means for you to do whatever you do, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, there's this saying where uh, setbacks define who you are. What would you uh, tell the young generation, people who face setbacks, what would you tell them about that saying? Um, see, um, a setback, you know, I think a setback is just uh, like, you know, the world, what is setback means? The setback means is like, okay, you planned something and that did not exactly happen the world, uh, it happened the way you thought it would happen, right? And, and basically, if anybody is not expecting, the world is not sitting there mm -hmm. waiting for you to tell something and the whole world will align for you. Mm -hmm. That never happens. The world is always doing whatever the world is supposed to do everything. Mm -hmm. And you are navigating through it with your goal and ambition. Mm -hmm. And things will go, some will in your favor, some will not in your favor. Mm -hmm. That is bound to happen. Mm -hmm. And some not going in your favor is a setback. And so, if you are not going to face a setback, that means you are not really seriously doing anything, right? You are probably just sitting in your home house and walking through, then you will have an asset. If you are going outside, driving through from one point A to point B, there is points you have to break. You have to take some detour. You don't be slightly less. So, that's like a setback, right? So, I don't think setback itself is a big deal, right? Uh, it's supposed to be expected, you should expect it, and it will happen, and deal with it, right? Uh, and uh, so, I don't want to give anything more than that to sit back, because it should not be, it should not be given, people should not be dwelling over it, they should just learn whatever it is and move on, uh, in many ways, right, in business, in personal, whatever it is, right, uh, it's going to happen, right, uh, sooner or later it will happen, right? We just need to be ready. We need to expect setback, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, have a deal with it and move on. Right. I'm sure uh, your experiences and your values have uh, had some influence on how you've perceived this place. Mm -hmm. So, if there were one thing that you would tell your younger self, mm -hmm. one advice, mm -hmm. what would that be? Um, I think uh, you know. I think. Um, my younger self, right? See, the thing is, uh, there is uh, too far, too much focus uh, on uh, too much uh, focus on being out there, being successful, uh, and uh, right, uh, uh, trying to prove and all that stuff. Uh, I mean, I would have a little bit kind of. Uh, I mean, that's good that nudged me move forward. But is that the only way to nudge and people move forward? I don't think it is not. That is a way commonly working out and all that stuff. Mm. But if there is a different way to move people forward, uh, I'm sure there are better ways to do that. The reason I say is that uh, the so-called success, right, financial success or whatever it is, uh, you know, success it is, it comes with the, uh, uh, just following that and then you do whatever will take you, give that success. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is there is a lot of anxiety comes with that. A mm -hmm. lot of frustration, a lot of anxiety, mm -hmm. and a lot of, uh, you know, comparison mm -hmm. and all that stuff comes uh, with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if that can be avoided, mm -hmm. and I came in that path, mm -hmm. I came in that path. Mm -hmm. But now me being there, mm -hmm. uh, if I have to redo all that stuff, I would have picked a passion mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, okay, rather than focus on the financial and the career success, mm -hmm. I would now give an advice if for a younger generation somebody to tell uh, how I would do, pick a, pick a goal where you are trying to deliver a value, okay. So I want to do value to whatever by doing something innovative in agriculture. I want to do a value, I'm good at this, and then I want to go and make it more better and efficient, uh, maybe in supply chain or e-commerce or education, whatever it is. So I would be targeting and focusing on value, uh, 
how can they deliver value and how can I be more valuable? Mm -hmm. That is the way path I would take. Uh, and I would mentor people, coach people to give rather than tell uh, the the success as a oh, more money or uh, that one because uh, that, uh, I can always be valuable. Mm -hmm. right? I can be, I can think the best of my value I can be. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a better way to define. Then the measure which is, is a financial success, mm -hmm. which is like, what are you going to say? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be this much rich. Right, that's kind of very difficult. And once you have accomplished that rich, what does it mean? Okay, you don't need to do anything. Whereas the value, if I say I want to always be valuable, I want to deliver value to uh, my staff, I want to give more value in this industry, that is always, you know, something you can pursue and stuff. So focus on delivering value and uh, then then the success through um, success through just means financial mm -hmm. uh, or power success. Right. One thing I hear you say is um, you always come back to what value you can add right. and uh, what are you naturally good at yep. and yep. how can you grow and uh, nurture that self of yours. Yes. That's exactly why you are such an inspirational leader. We, many, so many of us look up to you. Um, what would you say as um, to us? What, what do you think are some of the characteristics that we should pick up along the way to become a great leader? See, I think um, a great leader, right? First mm. and foremost, mm. uh, step number one, throw the great out. Mm. Because you want to become a leader, mm. right? But then we need to break down the word, what does a leader mean, mm -hmm. okay? The word leader means to lead. Okay. Okay. You want to lead, then you have to lead what? You have to believe in something for you to be in the front and lead. Okay. So before becoming a leader, you need to lead. You need to lead for becoming a leader. And you want to lead what? What mission? What is your goal? What is your value you want to lead in for? And once you, once you kind of uh, find that mm -hmm. then you will do that you will be leader by action see the thing is what is the old connotation of the word over the lead the lead is not in a hierarchy first and foremost mm -hmm. the lead is to lead in getting that done first I want to lead in action I want to be I am willing to put myself in the front mm -hmm. and do whatever mm -hmm. if you are willing to put yourself in the front and do whatever mm -hmm. First, you need to be passionate and you need to sincerely care about it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that is what I would say. The moment you care about something mm -hmm. and you are passionate about it, mm -hmm. you will naturally become a leader. You don't want to even try to become a leader. You, no, you, you, will, you will have no choice. You will do it. Okay. So that is what it is. Um, lead, lead by action. Lead by, you know, uh, I care most about I'm going to do it and you do it. And once you do it, then the people around you who are also inspired by that, they are going to follow you. Now, what, how you, now you became a leader because you are inspiring others and others are following you. So then first you are leading by action, then you become a leader by hierarchy because others are looking after you. Mm -hmm. That is the way to look, right? But the, again, the orders are flipped. Mm -hmm. People think I have to be hierarchically up somewhere mm -hmm. to become a leader. Mm -hmm. That's a manager. Mm -hmm. That's a manager, right? All you have, there is a bunch of people below you and they are, you have a line below them, that's it. That is not a leader at all. You can be a phenomenal leader with nobody reporting under you. You are just a leader by action. Mm -hmm. That is more important. Wow. <laughs> that, you know, this is so much of uh, confusion about a leader and a manager. Um, what a great way to put it. Um, you can be a great leader with nobody reporting you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And uh, some of the elements that you brought out, care, passion, and putting people first, and the willingness to put yourself out there. Uh, I think those are some great things that we can pick up along the way. How do you use this with your clients to collaborate and innovate? through data? See, I think um, uh, 
there is only two things right uh, in the world is that there is a there is a, there is facts mm -hmm. right uh, fact backed by data mm -hmm. right and uh, and then there is a um, opinion right and the opinions are subject to opinions correct like for example uh, you you may think uh, vanilla ice cream is great i may think a uh, pistachio ice cream is great, great right that's an opinion that cannot be backed by data right but which is the tallest building in the world that cannot be opinion right okay. right which is the you know something measurable cannot be opinion should not be an opinion right. whatever is measurable mm -hmm. should be a fact mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and um, the opinions are great let's leave that we are not we are in the we, we in our business are not in that mm -hmm. but the data part whatever is a fact mm -hmm. and we need to have no kind of we need to make sure the facts are facts and not become opinion right and we need to uh, we are in the business of giving the business the data mm -hmm. so they can make very informed decision mm -hmm. uh, right in their business uh, you know decision making taking care of their customers and all mm -hmm. that stuff and uh, from uh, working with the business and customers what i have do is that uh, the the philosophy i want to follow is that uh, is a, is a, uh, more than focusing on people on front I would actually always tell uh, be uh, you know the characteristic should be in the front character should be front uh, at, uh, right key attributes and character being like brutally honest mm -hmm. you, uh, you know which has worked for me always is uh, uh, you know even in inconvenient situations inconvenient things uh, mm -hmm. um, I think one thing is a which helps everybody phenomenally well mm -hmm. is and this is where many people have a lot of challenges mm -hmm. being brutally honest with yourself who you are that's one and being brutally honest when i use the reason i use the word brute is because it there are a lot of inconvenient things because when you are brutal you can you know deal with the inconvenient stuff mm -hmm. right uh, and brutally honest with our customers once that that level of honesty is there mm -hmm. with yourself or your relationships your customer mm -hmm. the then the trust is at a different level mm -hmm. the trust is at a different level mm -hmm. when the trust is established at a different level mm -hmm. then we are talking about real like you we can disagree mm -hmm. but there is no looking over the shoulder you know i what i was saying is that um, in the brutally honest part once that uh, trust is established mm -hmm. Then I think uh, you know uh, it makes it much easier with the uh, you know mm -hmm. people working. Then you can disagree, mm -hmm. but still it's going to be a lot easy to navigate through even the disagreements. So um, that's one important attribute. Right. Um, your journey of self-discovery mm -hmm. has uh, shown you how to. Be brutally honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Know what you value, mm -hmm. and then put that out uh, in front of the customer. But how do you find that in other people? How do you know this is the right talent to hire? How do you find that in other people? Uh, it is. Uh, it is. Uh, you know. Um, it is difficult, right? I think we can never be hundred percent. I think what I've heard from somebody is. Uh, the maximum you can be confident is 40 40% mm -hmm. and then the remaining is uh, you know you have to they come and they work uh, mm -hmm. and uh, they find whether you are a right fit for them and they are a right fit for you mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to take but uh, you know um, that's the way it is mm -hmm. so uh, I have not been I am not going to sit here and tell I have not been always successful mm -hmm. uh, I think at the best I think mine is 50-50 Mm -hmm. I've had 50% of the time uh, where I have had they for found uh, me to be a good fit and vice versa and uh, same but that's okay I think everybody goes through mm -hmm. and over time I think with the large um, you know uh, organization matures the leadership matures mm -hmm. uh, you find uh, uh, you mm -hmm. find more and more people uh, mm -hmm. that, that percentage increasing right so it's something that you um, learn day in and day out. Yes, yes. And you've been curating talent for Agilisha. Mm -hmm. What is your vision for Agilisha with people you've curated? Uh, 
the the the, the for the agrisium the future uh, where i see is that i want agrisium um, to be the largest mm-hmm. boutique uh, cloud and data company mm-hmm. uh, in the world mm-hmm. i use the word um, boutique very carefully mm-hmm. uh, because uh, i don't know uh, it will be too um, too kind of Uh, at this point i cannot tell agilisi uh, want to be the largest cloud and data company mm-hmm. uh, because uh, you know there are many companies mm-hmm. so, but where we stand today mm-hmm. uh, if we say largest cloud and data only consulting uh, boutique company hyper focused in that mm-hmm. i think uh, if we reach a number of 5000 mm-hmm. that will definitely put us in the spot mm-hmm. and so my goal for agilisi is uh, you know uh, we want to be the largest boutique cloud data company mm-hmm. um significantly focused in aws cloud mm-hmm. but we might also work on other cloud like mm-hmm. google and azure mm-hmm. but uh focused entirely on uh, cloud data mm-hmm. uh predominantly mm-hmm. and then few other things uh, associated with that right. and uh, i think to be reaching a headcount of 5000 mm-hmm. uh will get us there mm-hmm. um so that my goal is to in next couple of years mm-hmm. get to the headcount of 5000 mm-hmm. and a big chunk of that will be in india uh but we are also of course our customers are in uh us so mm-hmm. we will have a, a couple of hundred in us mm-hmm. i would say north america mm-hmm. us and canada mm-hmm. uh, we have a established office in canada mm-hmm. and then costa rica central america we are going to establish uh, we already have about um, you know close to 100 practitioners in costa rica we are going to further expand that mm-hmm. and also mm-hmm. we are working seriously working on expanding in eastern europe mm-hmm. so we are exploring countries like bulgaria to set up a shop mm-hmm. uh, and uh, you know expand there so with these three to four different uh, delivery locations mm-hmm. um, we want to have a global cloud data mm-hmm. um, under 5000 mm-hmm. and then like you know from there expand it further i think uh, we want to have a, we want to be the uh, specialty talent uh, you know um, talent supply partner mm-hmm. uh, where we can assist our customers mm-hmm. um, in specialty talent in their digital transformation journey right because the world is going to the digital transformation all business is going to become technology business mm-hmm. we all know that every single business is going to be disrupted by technology mm-hmm. and within technology specifically digital uh, transformation mm-hmm. the 3.0 mm-hmm. and that needs a lot and lot of technology people lots boat loads mm-hmm. and uh, um, you know if, if we need a tenfold more people mm-hmm. over next 10 15 years mm-hmm. than what we have today mm-hmm. and we need companies like agilisium to come in step up because now what's happening is everybody is needing and they are trying to grab it from each other mm-hmm. that can only go so far right so somebody needs to sit and focus on creating that talent now not just certification mm-hmm. training certification but also really getting them work experience mm-hmm. and i think what agilisium has done is we are going to focus on creating the talent incubating so mm-hmm. we have agilisium academy we are going to have agilisium talent incubator mm-hmm. and this agilisium talent incubator we are going to had 100% of our current strength so if this year we are 500 mm-hmm. we want to add 500 this year mm-hmm. uh um uh, in the incubation mm-hmm. so we will be 1000 next year and next year we are 1000 we are going to incubate 1000 mm-hmm. so we will du- every year double mm-hmm. through our incubator mm-hmm. so we are able to they build the talent and we can deliver that to our partners uh, we are planning to uh, find uh, you know lot of companies in us and the europe are struggling with the talent so we want to be a captive center we are going to be captive center for them uh, and uh, you know help them give them the talent here so they can set up their shops here so we are going to help with that uh, so the talent is going to be a challenge a big challenge and instead of we going to be a one other a uh, company fighting for talent mm-hmm. we have made a decision we are going to be the incubator mm-hmm. and we are going to incubate talent mm-hmm. and we are going to help our customers our partners mm-hmm. and ourselves uh, with the talent we are going to incubate and create right. 
I'm in awe of your vision and uh, I can't wait to be a part of this journey. Thank you for the brilliant conversation. It was uh, amazing sitting with you and chatting and thank you for being brutally honest and uh, sharing some of the values of uh, you know, experimenting, daring, something that we all can take, look up to you for. Thank you very much. Uh, great questions and it was a pleasure talking to you. And, uh, you know, I'm sure in sometime near future, uh, you are on the other side and you are inspiring 100 times, 1000 times more people than I would have ever done. I have a good mentor. I, I believe in that. <laughs> Thank you.